Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to Working on Change. Today, we're going to talk about the reality of living paycheck to paycheck. Let's get into it. This video is by somebody you guys, I know y'all don't know who this is. Uh, her name is Mind Over Business. Oh my gosh. Uh, Mind Your Business with Donna. Sure y'all don't know who that is? Because I didn't know who it was. <laughs> All right, so let's watch about this. She's going to talk about how some of the stuff that they say about living paycheck to paycheck is not always as true as people make it seem. Here we go. Investment firms and banking firms that they've worked for. And in doing so, their purpose is to establish trust, right? To make it a point to let us know that because of the background and the education that they have, we can trust the information that they're about to share with us as it pertains to helping us stop being broke. Okay. Here's the bottom line. The majority of those... Let me say this, though. If you're going to show the title of the video, you might as well show the name of the subscriber. I mean, of the person who made the video. Because you showed how many views it had, and you showed the name of it. People are just going to go look that up immediately. Types of videos... You can make a video on somebody. It's not a hit piece. ...are bonafide trash. If you're going to give me a video topic that tells me how to escape the cycle of living from paycheck to paycheck, by the end of the video... I expect to have at least one or two actionable items that I can get up and go and implement immediately based on what it is that you're telling Another me. Another thing, I'm just saying, when you're wearing glasses like this, it would be not, I would not suggest wearing glasses if you're looking into a light because these glasses are reflecting. It's hard to see her face. You're qualified to do and what it is. That I'm you're just saying something y'all may notice. I don't care. I'm just saying something y'all may notice. I see that, you know, it's hard to see her face. Teach me to do, but that's not the case with these videos. And so today what I've done is I have taken the very tips from those videos. I'm going to give you all of the examples that they gave. And then I'm going to tell you why those tips would not have worked for me while I was living paycheck to paycheck. And why in some instances, the information would have left me in a worse off financial situation than I was already in. But in addition to that, I'm going to tell you what I actually did. Okay, let's start off with the very first tip that I got from one of these videos. Tip number one was start a side hustle for instant earnings. Okay, then it went on to say immediately after that, a millionaire has seven different income sources. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pay special attention to the instant earnings part because that's going to be very, very important here in a minute when I start to give you these examples. So in the video, the person went on to list some examples and I'm going to put them up here on the screen. They went on to list some of these examples to help you get started with making instant earnings, putting money directly into your bank account as soon as possible. Okay. I'm going to give you those examples. Number one, web design. Number two, social media management. Number three, editing and writing. And number four, virtual assistance. Okay, the problem- now, now, she's going to make a good point on this. And I want to say this too as well. Okay, if you're, okay, man, listen, if you're a millionaire and you're giving advice to people who's living paycheck to paycheck, I think it's smarter for somebody who's not a millionaire to do that. I'm being honest with you. You need to take somebody who's just maybe two or three notches above somebody. Because it's like telling a YouTuber who's only getting four or five views how to get 100,000 views on every video they make. It's, it's too big of a gap and too big of a world for them to be able to comprehend it. When millionaires give advice, they're... It's, I understand it because people want to be like, well, how do I become a millionaire? But your first question shouldn't be, how do I become a millionaire? Your first question should be, how do I get to making, how, how do I become a $50,000 a year person? Then you go from, okay, how do I go from making 50K to 100K? How do I go from 100K to 200K? Okay, for how do I go from 200K to 500K? You know, I'm reading a book by Optimus. If y'all know who that YouTuber is, Optimus has a book out, only costs 10 bucks if y'all want to buy it. And he actually has sections in the book that says it's zero to a thousand subscribers, a thousand to 10,000, 10,000 to a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand to a million. And you, you read it based off of how many subscribers you make, because that makes far more sense. If he made a book and said how to get a million subscribers, 
when you're just a brand new YouTuber, it's just too wide of a gap for you to be able to explain it to somebody. And if you're a YouTuber who's brand new, don't look up how to be how to have a million subscribers. You need to look up how do I get to 10,000 subscribers? That's where I'm at. How do I get to 10,000 subscribers? I don't need to know how to get to 100K right now because that's a big gap right now. I don't need to know how to make a viral video to get me there. I need to know how to I get to 10,000 and to be able to start working my way from there. It's the same thing she's talking about. If somebody's a millionaire and they tell you they got seven different revenues, that's not help a person who's living paycheck to paycheck. So... I get what they're trying to do and I get that people ask them a lot and I'm not blaming millionaires for doing that. But at the same time, they got to be like, I wish that some of them would be like, hey, don't ask me how to become a millionaire if you don't know how to make 100K yet. Go ask somebody who makes less money than me because there's no advice I can give you that if you're you're making $30,000 a year, there's nothing I can tell you that can make you from $30,000 a year to being a millionaire. You need to first learn how to make 50K a year before you're trying to get here. You know what I mean? And then somebody could just tell you, hey, get this one side hustle. That's so much easier to do than get, oh, you need to get seven different side hustles right now. It's like, come on, dog. If I'm living paycheck to paycheck, how am I going to have enough money, enough time to really sit down and make seven new side hustles? Come on now. The problem I have with this is that none of these examples are going to result in an immediate paycheck simply because all of these examples require you to get clients <laughs> and to also have very specialized skills. That was perfect. The majority of us cannot get up from where we are today and start to pitch web design services. <laughs> if you aren't a good writer, you can forget about being a good editor. If you have had the internet cut off in your house, it's highly likely you won't be able to provide services as a virtual assistant. This I want to say this too. This is the same thing. If y'all want to watch a video about think before you sleep, when it talks about um, why we don't take advice from women, when not, not literally, you got to go watch the video. He's talking about taking certain advice from certain people about dating. This one just happens to be about a woman. The reason you can't take advice for some people is just because some people assume that you already have the ability to do that. For example, if I say, hey, if you want to get a girl, you just got to have confidence. Well, no fucking die. I understand I need to have confidence, but I don't have confidence. So you can't start with the first thing you need to do is have confidence. Me not having confidence is one of the problems. So what do you mean have confidence? See, that's what I'm saying. And you got to teach people not to just have confidence, but how to achieve confidence, how to get to confidence. Because if your first thing is, hey, have confidence, it's just like, okay, well, I can't do that part. <laughs> I don't have confidence. That's why I came to you for advice. All right, let's move forward a little bit here. Because this, this is an excellent point. This is an excellent point. These two points right here really had me thinking. Advertise saving. Please tell me how, if I don't have any money left over after I pay all of my bills, where is the money to save going to come from? Here's the problem I have with this. When you're telling someone to prioritize saving and there's no money left over, you're making the assumption that the person isn't managing their money correctly and you're making the assumption that the person is living above your means. This is what I That to is an excellent freaking point. I don't know why I'm holding this. Somebody says, prioritize your saving. Or number two, spend less money. You're assuming that everybody who's living paycheck to paycheck. This is what you have to understand with people who live paycheck to paycheck. You have to understand that sometimes that's just not how, um, it's not like, they were making a ton of money and now they screwed up to now they're living paycheck to paycheck. And sometimes you got to understand that some people who live paycheck to paycheck, sometimes that's where life has put them. That's just where they are right now. That's how life is going. It's not always oh, only the dumbest people will live paycheck to paycheck. As we all saw, inflation went up. A lot of people's rent went up. Groceries went up. So some people who were living within their means, they didn't get a pay raise when the inflation hit them. So there's no way they could have 
possibly been prepared for the inflation and the gas prices going up and stuff like that to where once they were spending $25 a week on gas, now they're spending 50 OK, so that 25, 25, 20, that's an extra hundred dollars a month is spending. Now, groceries goes up. So your grocery bill goes from being maybe two hundred dollars a month if you're living by yourself or something to now it's two seventy five a month. So right now you're spending an an extra hundred and seventy five dollars that you weren't spending. And if you spend any money on any TV services, right, Hulu, YouTube, YouTube music used to be YouTube premium was eleven ninety nine. YouTube premium is eighteen ninety nine now. Hulu is going up three dollars. All this stuff and in inflation is hitting people. But if you don't get a raise annually, right, and you're just trying to build the skills to make more money in that process, if inflation hits you. You're going to be making, you're going to have less money to do anything. So I don't like the concept that if you say prioritize your saving, live within your means, it doesn't always mean that somebody's living without the means. And I'm glad I saw this video because I know I've said the same thing. And I didn't even think about that. It's not everybody's living outside of their means. Some people are trying to save every dollar they got. They just ain't got a lot of dollars to save because life happens. If your car breaks down, guess what? That money, that little bit of money that you were starting to save, gone. If your kid has to go to the hospital, that little bit of money you had, gone. If anything happens in your life, gone. So it's not like everybody is trying to live it outside of the means. It's just that when you broke, everything is more expensive. Go get a car that's cheaper. Okay, but if that car breaks down because it was a cheaper car, it's going to cost you more money. And if it costs you more money while you're still trying to get out of that paycheck to paycheck life, you're going to stay paycheck to paycheck a little bit longer now. That's what I'm saying. So quit assuming that just because somebody's not wealthy or they're leaving paycheck to paycheck is because they don't know how to live within their means. Sometimes it's just life. OK, we see a lot of people struggling even more today just to get a damn house because it's so expensive. I do. I had to adapt as my money priorities change and I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by that. I had a high school son who was also a football player. So from August until May, the majority of my money went toward his needs. I had to pay for breakfast and lunch at school. I had to pay for the meals um, after the home football games. I had to have gas to be able to travel to the out of town games. There was money for fundraisers and the list goes on and on. After and on. the football season ended, then I would have just a little bit more money that I could allocate toward other things. Shortly after that, the school year would end, summer would begin. And so then I would have a higher grocery bill in the summertime because he's home all day, as well as a higher electricity bill here in Texas. So it became a matter of knowing how and when to shuffle my money around what time of the year I was going to have to pick up more of those Lyft and Amazon shifts and pitch myself more for speaking engagements. You get where I'm going with this? It was never a matter of not prioritizing saving, living paycheck to paycheck. It was always a matter of prioritizing where my money was going to go. The third tip was... All right, let's go on to the, another one that I thought was pretty good. <laughs> Actually, she says that all right here. So let's get into it. Was this is the, the, reduce your spending. One of the, points. the video said, make good decisions and only buy things that you need. This implies that when you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're not already doing this. The video then went on to list the following examples of things that you can do to reduce your spending. Here they are. Stop eating out. No, I will not. As long as outside food exists, I will continue to eat outside. When I was working all of those different jobs, my time to cook was very limited. So what I had to do was figure out and identify the places where I could get the most bang for my buck to feed me and a hungry teenager. Back then, two piece Tuesdays at Popeye's was a dollar and 19 cents. I knew it. She also talked about another one that I wanted to get onto. Uh, actually, I'll just talk about them. Um, so this one says get an affordable car, find a cheaper place to live and spend less on groceries. Here, here's the thing, man. OK, here's the thing. 
I don't want to steal too much of her shine. Go watch the rest of her video. It's a great video. Listen, if you tell somebody, because she makes another good point where she says, if you have a car, they tell you to go turn your car back in and get a cheaper car. Do you know that's not something you want to do? If you get a loan out on a vehicle, you go return it, you could be upside down. You might as well just stick with the car you have. And the risk you are going to run if you get a cheaper car is that you're running the risk of it breaking down. Okay? You run that risk. She says another thing where they say reduce your spending. She stopped going to the dentist. But and with her stop going to the dentist, she had more problems with her teeth. It costs her more money on the back end. I'm not saying, guys, that you need to go out of your way to get nice stuff. But if I would tell you, like, this is me saying this here. I live in a small town, so me having a vehicle, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, I have a car right now that my car overheats, okay? We own multiple vehicles, but I, the car I drive, it overheats, okay? But I live in a small town. I don't go anywhere. If I have to, we just use our other car. But I have a car that does not, I only travel maybe half a mile as, as far as I'll drive in that car, right? Now, that was a risk that I took buying a car that was cheaper. If I had bought a more expensive car and just uh, not bought more expensive car, but if I had maybe gone to a dealership, which I do suggest you buy your cash cars, but you cannot do that in a big city. You cannot do that if you live in a bigger city. Okay. And it's not simple to just move away from your entire family. You know what I mean? Like I did. And I'll tell you right now, moving away from my entire family is, was not worth it. It was not worth it at all. OK, but I'm going to say this that I'm just talking to people who say just go find somewhere else to live. It's just like, OK, I get that. It is a sacrifice to do that. So even I've suggested that in some cases, like sometimes you got to move. Sometimes you got to do that. If you can do it, please do it. But I, I have to understand that it's not easy to just pick up and move all your furniture somewhere else and move away from everything. And let me say this, though, back to the car. OK, if I lived in a big city, if I lived in Houston, or if I lived in, I only know cities in Texas, guys. I don't know a whole lot of cities outside. If I lived in LA, if I lived in Seattle, okay? If I lived in a big city, there's no way I could drive my car that overheats because I would have to go too far. So it would have been, I, the only reason I bought my car as cheap as I could is because I live in a small town. I knew it was going to have problems down the road, but I knew I didn't have to go far. If I lived in a big city, it would have been idiotic for me to buy a cheaper car just to save a couple of dollars because I would have been paying more money. There would have been times I couldn't make it to work. Oh, lost money there. There would have been time I had to fix the car. Oh, lost money there. So it would end up costing me, what, 2000 extra dollars if I had just gone ahead and said, you know what? I know it's gonna, I'm going to be a little bit broke for a little bit, but let me go ahead and get the better car. I'm just saying that the people who think living paycheck to paycheck is just a simple uh tweak this and you'll be a millionaire tomorrow it's just goofy and I, what i don't think millionaires and these guys don't tell you is like yeah it may take you two or three years to not live paycheck to paycheck it's not oh i live paycheck to paycheck if i make these small tweaks by next month i'll be in the money oh no. if you're living paycheck to paycheck it may be three or four years down the road before you do that even i had to do that uh, guys i went from making <laughs> Well, I'm not trying to say exactly, but I'll tell you this. Let's just go with normal numbers that we can all say. I went from making $2, uh, $2 an hour to $4 an hour to $6 an hour to $8 an hour to $10 an hour to $12 an hour. Okay. That's not really my real numbers, but let's just say that's how my life has gone. I went from broke to broke to broke to broke to a little bit of average to a little bit further above average. That's, that's, that's where I'm at now. But that was over five to six years of literally having to build my skills and get raises and keep getting a better job. But you're not going to start off just going paycheck to paycheck to, oh, now I can just do whatever I want because I made I stopped, I stopped eating out and I stopped spending a little bit of money here on groceries. I went from ramen, instead of buying ramen noodles, I buy the sun noodles now instead of buying hamburger meat i buy soy burger made out of dirt meat it's just like those even those small tweaks yeah they help you but that's over the long period of time it's not like you stop eating out and that gives you an additional two thousand dollars a month you stop eating out and that gives you maybe an additional fifty dollars a month that won't add up for another few years 
So the best way to get out of paycheck to pay is check is like what she said. You may have to start working for Lyft, Uber, DoorDash. You might have to get a little bit of side job, but there ain't no job in the world that's going to get you from going paycheck to paycheck to millionaire. There's not going to be anything to get you from paycheck to paycheck to six figures a year. You're living good. You're going on vacations. It may take five to six years to get from living paycheck to paycheck to not living paycheck to paycheck. I get the concept. Trust me, I get the concept of not doing that. And But I myself, and I am blaming myself, I made a video where I was talking about people who make minimum wage and I was making some dumb, dumb dumb things that I said myself that I was not even thinking about when I said them. It's so easy to say, well, just move. It's so easy to say, get a better job. I wasn't even thinking about how long it took me to get here. And so if you ever watch that video, and I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but if you ever watch it and I say some dumb things, here's me acknowledging I wasn't thinking straight. Thank God for her coming along. I watched her videos like, she's totally right. Going from paycheck to paycheck to not paycheck to paycheck is like a two, three year fix, you know? So anyway, let me know what y'all think, man. Do y'all think it's simple as going from paycheck to paycheck to millionaire or paycheck to paycheck to 100,000 subscribers? Do you think, and like I said, 100,000 subscribers, 100,000 a year? It's like I said, man, it's the same thing I would tell somebody who's a brand new YouTuber. And I am in the Reddits, man. I read new YouTuber Reddits and I see them all the time because I like to see what people think. And they think the same thing, man. As soon as they go from getting... 10 views to five views, they freak the heck out. They go, I was getting 10 views, I was getting 10 views a day, and now I'm only getting five. Or they'll be like, I was getting a thousand views a day, and now I'm only getting like five, six hundred. Welcome to YouTube. You know, when you're new at this, it's gonna go up and down, up and down. I watch a YouTuber who was who was making good money. I'm talking at least three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year in this last year. Guess what? They made $70,000 less than they did. They made $70,000 less in 2022 than they made in 2021. Guess what? That's life. But did she freak out? Nope. And guess where she is today? Making way more money now. It is just the beauty of life. You just cannot make easy fixes that fast, man. You can't. So I would never suggest a YouTuber who is as zero subscribers, go watch a video on how to get a million subscribers. It's like there, there is so much in between that needs to happen from you getting zero to a million. So there's just no damn way anybody can tell you a secret formula. I don't care if they tell you to make the perfect thumbnail. You know what's so funny? And I'm going to say this while I'm here. You notice the people who make videos on how to get a million subscribers or you notice people who make videos on how to be successful on YouTube they don't even, they're not even like as successful as they're making it seem. Like you watch some people who are like, here's how to be successful on YouTube. It's like, dude, you only got like 60,000 subscribers. How are you telling? I like, you know what I mean? It's like, they say it, they're saying stuff that will get you from make it. They'll say, how do you go from zero views to a hundred thousand views? And you go look at all their videos and they're only getting like 10,000 views of videos. It's like, well, you're not even doing what you're saying and if your stuff works so well if it's just as simple as a thumbnail a title and a niche then why don't you have like two three four hundred million subscribers you know what i mean that's what i think it's like how are you not successful and i saw somebody who did this exact same thing they were making videos on how to get from zero to a hundred thousand subscribers they hit a hundred thousand subscribers congratulations they did it but what they don't tell you is that they were in the right place at the right time because that same YouTuber who was getting 50,000 to 60,000 subscribers, I'm not going to call them out, but they were getting somewhere between like 50, not subscribers, 50 to 150,000 views a video. Can you guess how many views they get today? If you said 50,000, you'd be wrong. If you said 40, you'd be wrong. If you said somewhere between 70 to 80,000, you'd be wrong. They get somewhere between three to 8,000 views a video now. The person who is telling me how to be the most successful damn YouTuber ever now only gets 3,000 to 8,000 views a video. You know why? Because people stop believing in them because they're like, if what you're saying is true and all I have to do is niche down, all I have to do is get the perfect title you're telling me as a YouTuber how to be successful on YouTube by making YouTube videos on how to be successful on YouTube? Doesn't that sound so backwards? That's just like somebody saying how to become a number one selling artist. I mean, a number one selling author. And here's the book on how to do that. 
It's just like, and they've never been a number one selling author. It's like you're teaching people how to be successful from videos, teaching people how to be successful. That's how scammers work too. I'm not calling this person a scammer, but that's how scammers work too. They teach you how to make money on videos that teach you how to make money. <laughs> what? Anyway, yeah. Anyway, I'm gone. Peace. <laughs> I know it went on a rant at the end, but you know, all right, I'm gone.